Yeah. Perfect. Oh, hey. I want to welcome you to my glamorous world of plastic surgery. I put on the scrubs tonight. I got my ask me about my free surgical procedure troll bait shirt on. Anyway, if you haven't been here before, let me introduce you to the world of homeless hot plates and antique irons. And we are going to continue our path on the road to failure with this cord wrapped up in this 1940. Did you see that? No one died. Yeah, please get Alec off the set. Thank you. The 1940 The Prep guitar made by Harmony now. You've seen this one in other episodes. There's a playlist up there about a neck reset. Um, there is going to be a playlist about the Bonneville junk pile. I think I've left enough time in between. Anyway, have a look at those. But we steamed the neck off of this guitar and reset it. And in order to do that, we had to pull one fret. One fret. That one right there. We drilled down through the fret slot and we steamed off the neck. So now I'm stuck with 83 year old frets, except one that looks shiny and new. This is like putting me in a group of, well, just anybody. I don't like despite what you may think being that glamorous. Anyway, in all seriousness, we are going to pull the frets off of this guitar. I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to use some pretty simple tools, and we're going to use some equipment that you can find just about anywhere, because here's the bottom line. These frets are very small. This Stumac fret wire is bigger, and we are going to have to pull these old frets out, they're barbed, and we're going to have to do it in such a way that the same slots will take the new fret wire. I think you've seen me uh, do an episode about an arbor press up there for fretting. You're going to want to check that one out. And um, anyway, let's quit rambling and get to the bench, and I will show you how to do this. And uh, I need to hurry up myself because this guitar is going to Belfast, Ireland, UK. And uh, we don't need to dilly-dally, mate. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. Let's go. All right, then. Before we get going here, have a look. This is a fretboard. Again, 83-year-old frets. And I have a hot plate, and an iron that's about equally as old or older. It has a plug-in cord, but remember, electricity will kill you kids. Yeah, I have that shirt. We'll wear it next time. But anyway, I need something to heat up the frets on this fretboard because chances are these are glued in, maybe even with hide glue, which is what they used to put this guitar together back in 1940, I guarantee you. Now, problem is, is we are going to have to pry these up. There are grooves there, and we don't want to disfigure and deform the grooves because if you do that, the tangs on your new fret wire may not want to stick. And I do not want to build a new fingerboard for this thing. We are on a tight time schedule couple things I want to show you before I forget. The reading material, kind of weird, but I'll get through it. The rise and fall of the Paramount Records Company. If you know Sun House, if you know Charlie Patton, if you know Furry Lewis, if you know anybody that did blues or race records where the music we like came from in the 1920s and up to 1932, you are going to want to read this book. A little 
uh, preface about this. When you're reading it, it seems kind of weird. You get page and a half, two pages of little stories about people that are experiencing the Great Migration, which Paramount Records played into that, and what it was like to be a person during that time frame. I think that's the setup. I would go ahead and get this book if I were you. If you don't want to be as intelligent as I pretend to be, then don't get it. Just fast forward. Don't fast forward. You're already here. Anyway, next thing, couple tools. Very handy. This is a fret plier. It grabs a hold of a fret. When you squeeze it, it pushes down as you close it, like so. And when in use when used in conjunction with these things, these are spacers, frets go here. Once you get the first pull on these coming up and it starts to cut loose, you simply put the shim here underneath it or on the fret like this and it will give you additional prying leverage. So, fret plier, different from a fret nipper or cutter, and these shims, ten thousandths, twenty thousandths, you know, I deal with millimeters, I don't even know what that, that means, but, but they work, so if you're going to do that. So, this is really simple. You need something solid to hold the guitar. I've got the Stumac workstation that I give you a link to that episode where we reviewed this thing. And if you don't have that, you can get these Mr. Power guitar neck rests. So powerful, I can't even believe it myself. Anyway, so what we want to do here is we want to make sure that everything is tight and that the guitar is stable. And now we're just gonna take the iron that we've heated up and we're gonna put it on the frets. Now we don't wanna do it too long. We're just trying to heat up the frets. If you do it too long, you're gonna heat up the neck and the hide glue is gonna come loose. But this is basically just setting this on here like so. Waiting a little bit and then prying off frets. Okay, so this is pretty simple. You just take your fret pliers and your spacers and grab a hold of the fret, start working it up till it comes along. Remember, this wood is 80-some years old. These frets are curved just a little bit. You see that? Now, a little hint if you want to keep these, get a piece of cardboard, number them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen frets. One through nineteen, poke them in a hole, put them in a piece of cardboard, uh, drill nineteen, twenty, twenty some holes in a uh, top of a piece of wood like this. Number them if you want to keep them. But again, it's just patiently. Heating up the frets with your iron. And expect that there's going to be some chip out. You know there's going to be chip out. Um, I'm going to matchbook this neck and that will help hide that stuff. But it's just simply, again, coming to the edge. Working down slow. Pulling up by rocking back and forth, and they'll come right out. Like so, 17 more to go, I don't think you want to see this. If you do, get a life. Okay, the nice thing about these old irons is they had this thing that came with them. It was specifically designed for the Stumac work vise. You could set that up right there. Anyway, we're on the last four frets. Let's do this together. And we can collaborate with me doing the work. And you sitting there doing nothing and criticizing 
my work to your wife who's sitting there who doesn't hear a word you say about your guitars, no matter how much she pretends. <laughs> my, aren't I pleasant to be around? See that? This heat really matters because back in the old days, they used to build stuff that was kind of durable. And there we go. There we go. So I'm going to take this and put it down here. I'm going to let that cool off because I really don't want three, third degree burns, no matter what a surgical expert I really am. Anyway, we're going to dress these frets up a little bit and get rid of some of this chip out here. This is all comes with it. And get this prepped. And then we're going to put in new fret wire, and I got some stunts to show you there. Be right back. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take some 400 grit sandpaper. This stuff comes in rolls. Um, you can put it on a piece of wood if you like, but we're just going to go over this. You want to remember that this fretboard is going to be covered up. Um, so don't freak out that I'm ruining these painted on things but I want to get rid of the chip out here and make sure that everything is nice and smooth and since I'm going to glue this my matchbooks and stuff on here anyway I want to get rid of all the oil and grit and all that kind of thing get this nice and smooth then I've got a piece of this on a long flat piece of wood and I'm going to get this nice and level before I go to work on the frets, I'll spin this around, do the same thing on the back side. I'm trying to do this with my left hand, so I'm not always blocking everything with my right, but it's almost like having a stranger do it, you know what I mean? Okay, now we're getting down into here. There we go. Okay, when it comes to cleaning out these fret slots, let me tell you something you might not want to do. You know these saws, they're flush cut saws. I learned a hard lesson um, at the hands of Fred Wallachy, who told me, you know what, despite what you may think, these teeth are bent out. The rake of them comes out a little bit each way. Um, so they're not straight per se, and you could actually widen the fret out more than you want. So what you might think about doing is getting one of these pallet knives, even if you were to ruin it by running it to a grinder and sharpening it up a little bit, you can actually take one of these and go through and clean out those fret slots like so. You see that? That is what I would do. Now, Gonna kind of want to watch what the width of the tang is on your new frat wire uh, because it's gonna have to fit down in there. And if it's not matching to be snug, what ends up happening is you beat this in, and the stuff that is already chipped away from being this old is gonna deteriorate. You really, really want to watch. If you've got uh, something sticking up here, you can put a shim in here that you've cut to slide underneath there and keep everything tight and solid. You just want to be really, really careful doing this work. Anyway, patience will pay off. Can't tell you enough. Watch out for these flush cut saws. They're great when you're working on cigar box guitars and that kind of stuff. But when you get into this kind of stuff, you'll find yourself getting in a bind, ruining something that's supposed to go on a boat to make the opposite pilgrim trip soon. So I don't want any setbacks. So just get these nice and clean like so. Let me give you a little close up here. I talked about the shim. Remember we put one of these under here while we were gluing it up. That works good if you don't want this flopping up and down when you're pounding frets. Look, take a piece of this 400 grit. I decided I'd let you in on this. 
and uh, use your chick flick teal scissors and cut off a piece of this like this and what do you know this fits right down in them old fret slots a couple passes each way and you are good to go maximum efficiency see you go up here turn around and come back aren't you glad you know me because if i were you i'd sure hate to be me bingo all right here we are at the next step we are actually going to be putting fret wire on the fingerboard couple things i want to tell you about my good friend Darren Dukes, who got me off the ground first with guitar necks and then uh, just a lot of information when I was building cigar boxes, pickups, things like that. He told me, buy good fret wire, buy it by the pound or more. Um, I'm using Stumac number 152 medium and higher here. A lot of it here to do guitars. Um, you start buying different fret wires from different people next thing you know you got pieces left over the worst thing that can happen to you is you're looking for a piece you put a piece in then you find out when you're all done there's one fret that's sticking up and you just can't file it down because it's a different size so anyway buy good fret wire next thing he said he saw me using dykes and who knows what to cut the fret wire he just said just get yourself a good pair of fret cutter, cutters, yeah, Stumac. So there's a couple things I go to Stumac for, fret wire and these. Don't be caught without these. So a couple things we're going to do here. You're going to see that we've already went through and cleaned up. You like that little uh, 400 grit paper stunt where you just do this. I really should get a fret saw, a decent one. I think I might do that. Birthday's coming up soon. And then we've got the pallet knife that was cut down, but we got all the trash out of here. There's nothing hanging up, and we're good to go. So, you're gonna see me do a couple things here. I like to press frets in. I really like to put this stuff in when it is, when the neck is off of the guitar. When I build coffee can guitars and license plates and, and who knows what, that's what I do. But we're gonna start off here I'm, I'm going to tap these in first. So the first thing I want to show you is I don't like doing a lot of fret work on the end. So I'm going to take, I always take and cut the end of the fret wire off at a 45 like this. Then I'm just going to start here. I'm going to just lay this in here. Again, I don't want to do a bunch of fret work on the end. This is yeah, Stevie Ray Vaughan or Steve Vai. This is not these kind of guitars. We don't need that kind of precision. So, I'm just going to tap it. You see this little hammer I have here? I just tap this in. Get it to set right. You want to make sure it's set right because if it's not, it'll lay over and when it lays over and you beat it, then it will chip this wood out. And remember, it's pretty old, so I'm just going to get it in here. I'm going to tap it get it started now I'm going to come up to the end and I'm going to cut it at a bit of an angle like that what does that do it gives me my angle for my next fret so then I'm just going to hold it here pop it here like so and I'm not going to worry about that too much right now I'm going to press it in once I get down the fingerboard so you don't need to watch me do this, but you kind of get the idea. Tap the end in. There, it's doing exactly what I said I didn't want to do. Tap the end in. I can use a heavier hammer if I like, but I really don't want to be cracking the body on this. That's why it's nice to do it off of the guitar, but oh well. It's going to come down. Give it a couple good smacks and walk right down the fretboard. I'll pick up on this when I get a 
a ways down. Hey, before I move along too far, um, I wanted to show you on the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15th fret. Do you see right there, there's a hole there in the fret slot and one there? That is where I drilled in to put the steamer in to break that loose. I thought I'd give you a close up there before I do the final drive in on that fret wire and cover all that up. And when your fret wire starts getting shorter, you don't have a lot to hang on to. Again, make sure it's sitting right. Because if it's not, it will fold over and break everything out. I need both hands for this now. Okay, there's fret two. One more left. You know, I can't tell you enough. Make sure that these fret slots are clear. Um, you bash one in sideways and break everything out. You're putting a new fingerboard on and that sets you a ways back. So... Line up everything careful. This one's fighting me, I can tell. There we go. But I'm going to show you something super cool now. That I think some of you have seen before. Some of you have seen before, and that's called an arbor press. A fret press. Let me get it set up. All right, this thing is really, really cool. It's a fret press. You have a coal, C-A-W-L, that you can get from a, a manufacturer that we all know and love. And there is a groove in this piece of brass right here that matches the radius of your neck. If it's a flat neck, that's one thing. If it's got a different radius, you just order the right one. But after you... Uh, rough in your frets like I did with the hammer I just take this and bring it down over the top of my fret like so and once it's sitting there I just use good old pressure and push down and it seats the fret bring up the next one Make sure everything is lined up. Again, there's a little slot in there. And when you get close, you just take a look. Pull the handle back. And press that fret. Things start messing with you a little bit here. You have to adjust your wood. We're on the third one. You can see I can stick my fingernail underneath there. But once I get this lined up and press down... Everything straightens out. You see that? These things are awesome. Can I zoom back out? Oh, that's all the zoom out we get, but yeah. There's another way to do this. Let's do it this way. Again, there is a playlist or an episode where I showed you how to make one of these uh, out of a press you can get at a cheaper tool hardware store, drill this out a little bit and adapt standardized stuff to this machine. This thing is awesome for blowing out necks that are not on the guitar yet. If, if you're doing cigar box guitars, you have to have one of these. Okay, so I want to show you some. This is desperate measures for desperate times and I've never really done this kind of thing before. Have you? You know the rest. Anyway, the fret slots are there. We've got the new frets in there. We've got them beat in. And before we do anything, we're going to put a little bit of this super thin CA glue. CA glue. Very thin. And we're just going to go and put a drop at the end of the fret slot in each one of these and it will run down inside the fret slot by itself 
and it will secure these brand new frets into this old man fretboard. See that? Great capillary action. These bottles are great. They also have needle tip applicators. But we're going to do this and we're going to let it sit for about an hour. Now we're going to flip it over. Now, you're asking yourself, does this have anything to do with why he cut a 45 in the end of the fret wire? So I get a 45 on each end. Yeah, because it gives you this little bit to catch on the end. Right there. And be careful doing this. You don't want to glove all this over. So you have to hide it with matchbooks like I do. One more time. CA glue, water thin, super fast. That's right. Let's wait for glue to dry. Okay, we are off to the other side now. It's flowing in good. Like I said, I don't normally do this. If I'm building a cigar box guitar and doing the neck or something like that, you won't see me doing this, but this is just a precaution to keep this old fret board together and the new frets in. All right, guys, let's jump ahead. I wasn't going to put you through the nightmare that is me um, dressing frets, but I'm going to give you a few hints here. Uh, first off, I have the big string on over here, and I have my bridge ready, and the intonation point set on where the floating bridge goes. So, I told you that when we start, we take our fret nippers and get as close as possible. Um, we cut an angle in them. That gives us room underneath the fret at the edge for the um, CA glue to capillary action itself on the way in. Now, um, first thing I want to do, and this is unorthodox, and figure out if you're a purist, you shouldn't be here. If you're going to comment about how you do it or how your grandpa did it, your grandpa's not here. I'm the grandpa here. Thank you. Anyway, you know what this is? Yeah, it's a bastard file. I said it. Give me a, a, a report or anything. But really simple um, here. You grab a hold of the neck up here. You turn this around, and I'm going to use this sandpaper thing. And you just basically run it down like this and like this. You see that? And then... You get the angle right and just pull it all the way. Now, I'm telling you, pull it all the way when you're doing this because here's the problem. If you start up here and pull it and pull it and pull it, by the time you get down here, these have been hit 10 times while these are hit five times. So you want to get in the point uh, or in the habit of counting all the strokes you do every time on everything. That's going to help you get through second grade. Yeah. And it's going to make your work better later because if you're filing over here and doing this and that, when it comes time to set the strings up, you're going to have one of them sticking up. You're going to have one over here that's not right. And it just creates more work. So bastard file. Next thing, you take a magic marker. That's a 60s term or a Sharpie. And you can go across each fret like so. Go all the way up. And what that does is when you start filing, you can tell what's high and low. So next thing I want to show you is a piece of oak that's been planed flat. And we've talked about 400 grit sandpaper that comes in a roll that's got an adhesive on the back. You just take this and lay it on here and work the whole fretboard and watch for these lines to either stay uh, visible or disappear. And if they start disappearing uniformly, you know you're right on. Now, remember, the more you work this over the frets, the less they are going to be crowned. They're going to be flat. You don't really want them flat. 
So, next thing you want to take a look at is they have things called fret rockers. Okay, there's three sides of different lengths. So, when your frets are close together down here, you use a short side and you can go along and see if this thing will develop a rock. If it's doing this, that means you've got a fret that's not right. So you just walk down the fingerboard. The long edge is for up here where the frets are furthest apart. And you just walk down all parts of the fingerboard and you try to see if any of the frets, one is higher than the other. And then there's an intermediate section that works in here. Here's how to tell if you have a problem. If you put your strings and bridges on, and you don't want to get to this point when you're at the end of, of doing your fret work, but you'll be going down, ba, 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 the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do thing, and all of a sudden it will stop, and the tone or note will be the same. So you're going along, da, 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 da. no, I'm not available for higher, da, da. And then all of a sudden the notes stay exactly the same. Well, guess what? There's a high fret that's stopping all of the other frets from working. So if your note ends here and stays the same over the next three, wherever your note ends, it's the next fret. If you want to take your fret rocker, depending on which side is what, like so, and you'll find it that way. Now, if you do find it, this is a fret rocker. This is called a fret kisser. I don't talk about kissing on my channel until now. This thing is very expensive. But do you see there? It's got a diamond file right there. So look here. This side and this side are a tad lower than the center. So let's say that I have found my fret. I take the side that's most appropriate to the spacing because it's set up this way. And I just take this and I go along where, where's Chick Flick Teal Pointer? This part is lower than this part and this part is lower than this part. So when I set this on the fret, if it rocks back and forth at all, this diamond thing, I just go back and forth until this has made this the same as this and this. You follow me? These things are pricey, really pricey. Once we've got these basically in order, if you've done any filing, these are going to be flat. You don't want that. You don't want them pointed, but you want them rounded over. Now, it's not really important to me the stuff I'm going to do. Um, I don't care if the fretboard is beat up at all. I just don't want anybody cutting their fingers here. And I don't want these being too short or, or whatever so the strings don't fit right. But in the case you're a purist, you're going to want a few sets of these. You see that drops down right there? That's for a rubber band. So you put this over here. And flip the rubber band around like so or you can just hold it or do whatever you want to do but they come in different widths because these frets down here are closer together you follow me these fingerboard protectors are great things so you're at a point right here where you realize these are flat I want to I want to straighten them out um, the way they're supposed to be, rounded a little bit. The ends are beat up from me taking first off the bastard file and giving one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and you get yourself set up where you're going through this like an assembly line, but always count. Trust me, if you don't do that, there's going to be a problem. So, um, first thing we want to do is we want to get to the ends and get those down curved around and not pointed here or up on the top. There's a couple ways to do that. These things are pretty handy. Uh, they're fret grinders. They have these little belts on them and this springs together so you can just turn this like so a little bit and when it wears 
you're just basically taking this and going on the end of the fret and one, two, three, four, five, one, two, again, always do the same thing. You can also do this with a file, a block. It's kind of like a wet stone. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I like this thing. It's a Stumac tool. Again, it's very expensive. I didn't pay for this guitar for what I paid for either one of these. But this also has diamond fragments in it. And what this is really for is... Let's say I've got my strings on already like this, and I've got a high fret. I can loosen the strings up a little bit and use the fret kisser like so. But if all the strings are on, what I can do is take this and come in under the strings. And these are available in different radius, radii, the plural of radius. Some of them are short. Do not let people steal this to use as a fingernail file because once they know you got it, that's what they'll do. But you basically can take this thing under the fret, or I mean under the string and do what you need to do. But the other thing you can do with these, they have diamond or triangular shaped files where you'll see people going one, two, one, two, and then doing it this way and they're flipping this diamond shaped file around. This thing works equally well you just go along the side here. Now notice that there's no files here. I actually like this better than a triangular file because this is rounded and smooth. So if you put it on here like this, you are not going to do anything to your fingerboard here with this. You can go ahead and put one of these on as well if you want. But these things are awesome for filing the ends of frets, individual frets. And then finally, you can't beat one of these things. This has a, a file inside of it. It's rounded. There are two different size rounds here. One is th uh, thicker and thinner than the other. And you just lay this across here. And again, you want to make sure that you start in the same place. So I can't start out here because that is there, but I put this thing on the fret and one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Again, if you do five here and four up here, do not be surprised when you're doing your setup that this fret right here, or especially the one that we removed the 15th fret to steam the neck off, that's always going to be a problem. So, one more time beat or press your fret individual fret wires in evenly. Make sure you use good fret wire. Make sure you don't get your different size fret wires mixed up. Get them in as evenly as possible. If you're going to use CA glue and you're working an old fret board, you want to make sure that all the frets are out and you go over and you treat this, sand it, do whatever you're going to do, get the fret slots cleared out, Remember how I showed you to take a piece of 400 and go like this. Get everything as uniform as you can do that. If you put the little bit of time in to getting everything level and right, it will be a lot less time later. Trying to work one fret after the strings are on, and you're supposed to ship this to Ireland two days ago is not going to be a good thing for you. Next, did I tell you the importance of nipping your frets close. Save yourself a lot of work. Don't use dykes. Get a good set of fret pliers. Then take something and mark your individual frets, something that will cover the whole fingerboard. Don't use a short piece of wood with a little uh, piece of sandpaper on and try to do this because if, unless it's covering the surface of all the frets at once, you're going to get this. You don't want that. Then, um, did I talk about the bastard file? Yeah, just get as much off and get it as close as you can. I quit using the bastard file when there's not something sticking out to hang up and then I get that end of the fret pattern where it's looped over a little bit done with this fret rocker. Always use a fret rocker. 
remember there are sides that correspond with the spacing of the frets. If you're going to find one that's a little bit high, you can use a fret kisser. Um, it takes care of individual things, but it, even when you're using this stuff and you got individual frets, always go back to your magic marker and do the next couple around it to make sure that what you're doing here isn't messing up something here. Count, count, count. When it comes to the ends of your frets, and you want to round them off, you can use something like this. The belts are replaceable. You can use a triangular file, or you can use this fancy gadget, which has no file there. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. You get it everything exactly the same. If you're squeamish, unlike the Bonnevilles in Belfast, Ireland, UK, you can use these things fretboard protectors they come in different sizes based on the gaps between get a few sets of these and set them up in a line and again they have grooves for rubber bands that's what that's for finally you've got this will round off your frets like they're supposed to one two three four five you're always going to have some problems at the end, and you'll deal with individual frets. Last thing, again, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, 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 do. The first fret that you lose the tone on, it's always the next fret. Go down one side of the fretboard, the other side of the fretboard, do all of the strings, and you will find that there will be, this one's a little high, this one's a little high, and you can use this tool or even the fret kisser to go between the strings and go back and forth until the line matches all the way across. That is a crash course on fretting. Alrighty, the last thing we're going to do before we close this out is we're going to have to put fret markers on the side here because we're going to cover up that fingerboard with these matchbooks. They're all Mississippi themed. And um, and so we're going to put them on the 3rd, the 5th, the 7th, and the 12th, which will have two markers. Now, this is pretty easy to do. Um, you can get fret marker material. Uh, it's basically vinyl. It comes in black and white like so. We're going to use white because it stands out. You just take a piece of this. You're going to use the metric system, of course. To measure between frets. Uh, if it's 34 uh, millimeters here at 17, you make a mark right there and you take your awl and you want to make sure that you don't hit this too hard because you will split the fretboard. But what you're trying to do is just get a spot like that and then you're going to take your drill and go down not too far. nice and straight like that then you're going you're going to put hey you know what season it is it's bug season it's daffy season no it's elmer season yeah remember that one and put a little bit of glue right down in there like so now you're going to push your fret marker material down in there find the bottom pull it up just a little bit then you're going to cut it with these side cutters don't use your fret pliers and then you're just going to tap it in just like that now you will notice that I have this tape here that's because when I want to file it down this tape stops it from getting to the fingerboard when I file so I'm going to let that dry up like that you with me? All right, let me get this done and we'll close this part of this guitar build out. All right, we got the frets on this thing and I wanted to show it to you. I got some other stuff going on here, but we will talk about it when I wrap it up. We're getting really close. I will run through it in the final episode on this guitar, the Bonneville Junk Pile. It is going to go into the mail and I don't know whether it's an airplane or a rocket or a 
submarine or a boat or something like that. But I'm going to get this over to Belfast, Ireland, UK. Now, um, oh, check it out. I want, to, I want to remind you a couple things. Scott H. Byram. Shout out to Scott H. Byram. I made a guitar uh, and gave it to Scott H. Byram a long time ago, a cigar box guitar. It was an episode called Graphics. I've gotten a lot of hits on that one. Um, takes me back a long ways. Don't forget The Rise and Fall of Paramount Records. Good book. I'm getting through it. Um, if you like the kind of music that I push on this channel, um, you're going to like that book. So, again, let's close this out. I have uh, gone through basically how you pull the old frets off, put the new stuff on, yeah, this nobody's going to get caught on this thing, um, but considering what I had to do to the neck and what the neck angle looks like now and all that, it's all going to work out. Um, key thing is have the right tools. Have a couple of files that you can use. Get um, fingerboard protectors, um, a straight edge with sandpaper, and just be patient. That's the right thing. So... Um, I remember when I started out, I'd see people were building fretless this and fretless that. Just dive into one and, and get the fret job done. Get a fret scale. Um, go to a guitar, measure behind the nut down to the 12th fret, double it. That's where everything goes. It's not as scary as it looks. So, okay, um, keep watching this one. We're about done. We're off to another adventure. And give me a like and a subscribe if you haven't. And I will give you a link below. Oh, one, one more thing. I almost forgot. You know Frank Goldwasser? He's always playing my guitars. He has a channel where he's teaching you how to play blues guitar. He's just sitting somewhere in Paris, France. And I'm going to give you a link up there. To find his channel, I'll also give you one down below and the books and everything. And hey, Scott H. Byram, get through Los Angeles area pretty soon because we're fixing to have some withdrawals here. I will see you guys soon and you will see the final episode about this guitar before it hits. However, it's going to get to Belfast, to the Bonnevilles over in the UK. See ya.